And uh, why, first of all, I like to say, I ask, answer the question, why do we compare the two masters? And Shakespeare could be regarded as a representative of Western culture. And Tang Yanzhu, and as one of the most important dramatists in China, and it could be considered as a representative of a traditional Chinese culture. And his place is well known in not only in China, but also in other countries. Tang Yanzhu's place has been performed and studied in Japan, the United States, Russia, Germany, Great Britain, and other countries since 1920s. In my opinion, by comparing the two playwrights, we can better our understanding of the differences between Chinese and Western cultures. And my talk consists of a few points. First of all, culture background. And then I like make brief introduction to the two masters dramatic works. Then I discuss love and then three forms of lust that is incest, zoophilia and a greed for power in the two masters works. And uh, first of all, I, you know, many scholars agree that the Chinese culture is quite different from Western culture. And we need to trace the difference to their origins. And the Chinese culture uh, originated from the farming activities on the vast land on a large continent. And in traditional Chinese society, the dominant thoughts include Confucianism, Taoism, Buddhism, and the ancestor worship. Some, some scholars, especially some Western scholars, consider Confucianism as a religion. But most other scholars do not agree. In my opinion, Confucianism is quite different from a religion. But in terms of influence, I just say the influence and the Confucianism uh, is very influential. Uh, is can, the influence of Confucianism could be uh, regarded like like uh, like a religion, and Taoism. Taoism is the only native religion in China, and Buddhism is a religion uh, borrowed from India. Uh, besides uh, these thoughts, Ch traditional China considered much importance to ancestral worship. Uh, as to Western culture, we know Western culture originated in ancient Greece, where mercantile culture and marine culture is more influential than farming activities. And in Western culture, the Christianity is one of the most important thoughts. Now let's move, move down to another point. And uh, Tang Xianzu lived in the late Ming Dynasty. And uh, Shakespeare lived in Elizabethan and the Jacobin period. And actually the two masters live in the same period uh, in history. And uh, Tang, Shakespeare passed away most probably on his 52nd birthday, April 23rd. 1616, and Tang Yanzhu passed away just a few months later. And interesting enough, the Spanish writer Cervantes and uh, a very important writer in Latin America, uh, El Inca uh, Garilaso de la Vega, passed away in the same year, 1616. What I want to emphasize here is William Shakespeare and Tang Yanzhu lived in the same period, but they have never met each other. Uh, and also there, there are long distance between England and China, 
and uh, there are some similarities between the two masters. Uh, the first point I like to say, despite the clear difference, both of them are remembered mainly as a dramatist. And Shakespeare also did a job as a stage manager, and he also wrote some po many poems. And for Tang Yanzhu, Tang Yanzhu uh, also served as a magistrate of the county for many years. And Tang Yanzhu also wrote many poems and other articles. Um, however, both of them are remembered mainly as a dramatist. The second similarity between them is that all their plays were written on the basis of somebody else's works. I mean, all the plays are adapted from somebody else's uh, stories. And the third point is both of the playwrights are considered as writers of all time, as their, their dramatic works has been read, performed, and studied for over four centuries. The last point I want to say is that both uh, masters treat uh, universal motifs, love and lust, which I'm going to talk in detail. Um, now, I just uh, give a brief introduction to uh, Tang Yanzhu's place. In Tang Yanzhu's lifetime, he wrote four plays compared to uh, Shakespeare, yeah, the number of the plays is much smaller. And each of the four plays contains a dream. So his four plays was also called Four Dreams. The first play is called, is entitled Purple Hairpin. The second one, the Pyrenee Pavilion. Pyrenee Pavilion is the most a famous among the four plays. And the third one is a Nanke dream uh, or a Handan dream. And um, as Wilma has said, so we have different versions in English. Different translators may use the different name in English. And as to Shakespeare, Shakespeare's plays can be put into four categories, such as uh, history plays, comedies, tragedies, and romances. Romances are also known as tragic comedies. And now I talk about Tang Yanzhu's first play. The first play, The Purple Helping, is a love story about a young couple, a handsome young man and a beautiful girl. And the hero, the name the Li Yi, uh, Li Yi, and the visit uh, very uh, meet the Xiao Yu at a Lantern Festival. You know, Lantern Festival is the uh, um, important festival in Chinese calendar, and uh, this festival indicates the end of the New Year's season in Chinese calendar, and the people celebrate because uh, the New Year's season comes to the end. After that, people need to work again. And at this uh, festival, the hero Li Yi meets the beautiful young woman Xiao Yu and uh, fall in love at the first sight. Li Yi finds the purple hair pin Xiao Yu has lost. So he has the opportunity to meet her again and shortly afterwards, they get married. Now later, Li Yi comes first in the civil examination. Civil examination is a, a examination system which lasted for 1,000 years in Chinese history. And this, uh, by this examination, and the government select talents from the ordinary people. So civil examination is, uh, uh, could be considered um, a device by which 
the ordinary people can climb up the social ladder. So Li comes first in the civil examination, but the high level official Lu intend to choose Li as a, his son-in-law, although they know Li has got married. However, Li is a lawyer to Xiaoyu and rejects the official. Then Li is confined in the high level official's house. And knowing about Li's situation, Xiaoyu become desperate. One night, she has a dream of a pair of shoes. A pair of shoes in Chinese language, shoes that sound is a xie. And in Chinese, harmony. Harmony also means xie. According in the play, according to the interpreter of the dream, is a dream of a pair of shoes. It predict that she will meet her husband again. In the harmony me is a harmonious relationship between man and wife. So it's a good dream. Finally, with the help of the friend, the couple are reunited and live a happy life together. So this is a uh, very uh, love story about a young couple. Then uh, let's look at the purple hairpin. This is a picture of the play. And this is uh, the young man, Li Yi. And this is Xiao Yu, the young woman. The young woman is holding a purple hairpin. I suppose the, uh, the, the young man find it, the purple hairpin and return to the girl, the young woman. So they have a look, watch the purple hairpin. And here is the hair, hairpin of today. Hairpin in traditional China. And uh, hairpin is a very important ornament for the hair, hair for a woman. And sometimes never seen a woman's love to rival that of a linear, to compare the linea. Dreaming of a lover, she fell sick. Once sick, she became even worse. And finally, after painting her own portrait as a legacy to the world, she died. Dead for three years, still she was able to live again. And he continues to comment love. Love is of a source unknown, yet it grows even deeper. The living may die of it. By the power, the dead live again. Love is no love as at its fullest. Yeah, it's very important sentence to Tanzu. Love is no love at its fullest. If one who lives is unwilling to die for it, or if it cannot restore to life one who has so died. So we can see that uh, from this, Love is no love as the fullest if one who lives is unwilling to die for it. So this is the same uh, as Shakespeare's conception of love. So young lover is willing and even eager to die for it. But Tang Yanzu goes further. So love is no love as the fullest if it cannot restore to life when who has so died. So um, it's, uh, uh, it's the love go beyond life and death in this way. And you may uh, say uh, many, I suppose many of you maybe um, have a very important question. It's hard to believe. Yeah, three years, after one death, how can they come back to life? So from this, I, I like to say uh, the difference between Shakespeare and Tang Yanzu. And for Tang Yanzu, Tang Yanzu plays more realistic and he turns tragedy to express deep love. 
and the Tang Yanzui is more symbolic. And also, he preferred to give a happy ending to the play. And uh, uh, it's also because the Western literary tra tradition and the Chinese literary tradition. And in Western words, uh, we can see um, more than one story, several stories about the young lovers who die for each other, finally they commit suicide for love. And uh, in, literary, in Chinese literary tradition, and uh, there are numerous sto stories about love between a young a living human being and a ghost. So uh, in terms of uh, the literature, the Tang Hian to the play is uh, uh, possible, uh, poetically possible. And this story is borrowed adapted from a story uh, from Tang Dynasty um, hundred years before. Now let's move down to uh, last. The first form last is incest. And what is incest? Simply incest is a sexual relationship between persons who are too closely related to marry legally. There are several forms of incest. For example, brother sister in law incest, brother sister incest, or parent child incest. Parent child incest, two forms father daughter incest, and mother son incest. Comparatively speaking, the parent child incest is the most serious of these forms. And a brother-in-law, brother-sister-in-law incest is at least in serious forms. And in some cultures, brother-sister-in-law, uh, the sexual relationship between brother-sister-in-law is not related, not regarded as incest. And morally speaking, if a person is uh, morally bad, if he has sexual relation with the brother or sister-in-law, and we can say it's kind of incest. In some, um, yeah, it's uh, when judge one's morality uh, sometime in different ways. And the Tang Yanzu, let's see Tang Yanzu the play. Tang Yanzu the four plays, only in Nanke dream, there is a brother sister-in-law incest. You know, this incest is the least serious of the so many forms. And if we look at the Chinese drama in general, we can say the incest is rare and mild in Chinese drama in general. Here, uh, I just give a good example. Uh, years ago, there is a very big collection of Peking Opera plays was published. It contained many volumes. Altogether, it has four. 199 plays. I read through all of them. I found only one of so many plays touch upon incest. And the incest is uh, uh, between half brother and half sister. So comparatively speaking, it's, uh, it's not very serious. Let's compare Shakespeare. In Shakespeare, we can find a few uh, stories of incest. For example, brother sister in law incest in Hamlet, and a potential uncle niece incest in Richard III. And the most serious form of incest, father daughter incest in Pericles. Now let's look at the potential uncle niece incest. And uh, in Richard uh, III, Richard is presented as a vulgar, shameless, and a monstrous figure. And King Richard murdered his brother, his nephew um, to seize power. And one day she had murdered the two princes. I mean, 
his nephews, and all, he, to secure his kinship, he even expressed the desire to marry his uh, niece. Queen Elizabeth is his elder sister-in-law. And he says to his sister-in-law, if I, if I did take the kingdom from, from your sons to make amends, I will give it to your daughter. If I kill the issue of your womb to quicken your increase, I will beget my issue of your blood upon your daughter. Queen Elizabeth said, I took the father as a husband. So he is now we can see the identities uh, become confused. He is a father, son, husband, mild. I, mother, wife. So the Confucianism attach much importance to social order, social stability. And then, you know, Chinese culture was based on farming activities. And maybe hundreds of people, um, generation after generation, may live on a small piece of land in the uh, village, small village or several village for many years, even hundreds of years. So everybody needs to depend on the collective for survival. And the social stability should be well maintained. And, in, and the, to whom must listen to who? So who is in the higher position? Who is in the lower position? Who is the lowest position must be very clear. It's uh, this um, effort, this importance of social ability, social stability can be seen in the language. In English, uh, we have the word uncle. We have a word uncle. But in Chinese language, we have three different characters, different words for uncle. That means we Chinese people make a very clear difference between different uncles. The first uncle is the most respected. Bo, Bo means father's elder brother. And Shu, Shu is the father's younger brother. And Jiu, Jiu is the mother's brother. So in the family, to a one person, Shu is more important than Jiu because the mother brother belong to another family. And Shu has the same family name as one's family. But we also make a distinction between the uncles who is older than your father or who is younger than your father. So the older need to be receive more respect. And we have the similar uh, difference in other addresses. So uh, in, and in Chinese, uh, in this way, in this context. So the incest is considered a very, very terrible challenge to the social uh, stability. Even if the incest exists, yeah, according to many scholars, incest happens in every culture, in every, all societies. But even if incest exists, in traditional Chinese society, it cannot be mentioned. It should, be, should not be talked about. It should not dramatize so uh, boldly on a stage. So uh, Tang Yanzhu's uh, touch upon incest in his play is very invasive and it's of a least serious form. Now let's compare. Uh, why Shakespeare and the Western theater as a whole are so explicit and bold at this point. And the Western drama has 
the tradition since Oedipus the king. So in Oedipus the king, we can see the terrible incest. And for Aristotle, Greek tragedy, the purpose is to arouse pity and fear among the audience. And as a result, the audience the soul will be purified. So the, in Western drama, they have the tradition to present the very tragic stories. And I think incest is a suitable topic for tragedies in which close blood relatives will kill each other. So incest is a very suitable cause for tragedies. All right, let's move on to the next form of a last, zoophilia. Zoophilia, and in, um, you know, Shakespeare have nearly four, uh, 40 plays. But as I uh, find, his play, only one of the play touch upon a zoophilia. But this zoophilia is not explicit. It is just the potential zoophilia in this play. As we know, the play, uh, in the play, the fairy king, Auburn, talk about a special portion, love portion. The function of portion is like this. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make man or woman madly thought upon the next live creature that it sees. When talking about his queen, Titania, Auburn says, the next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of life. And finally, we can see the fairy queen has a crush on a donkey-headed man named Bottom. And in appearance, the queen seems to love an uh, animal, a donkey, but actually it's, uh, it's a man, it's a bottom with a donkey hat. Another occasions where the zoophilia could happen, we can say the potential zoophilia with a few characters. Demetrius, Lysander, the two young men shift their love from a girl to another girl, Helena, because of a spell of the love portion. And we can imagine if the two young men see a creature, see an animal while waking up, so very possible both of the young men will have a crush on the animal. Another occasion, this be. This be is the young man in the play within play. It's a tragic love story. And uh, this be and uh, his, her lover, Pyramus, commits suicide for love. And this be said, this is the old name in the tomb. Where is my love? And then a lion appears, raw, roaring. And in this, on this occasion, if we can imagine, if this beast's eyelid has the love portion, and if, we, if she sees, the first she sees is an animal while waking up, and the spell of the love portion, and this bee may have the crush on the line. But on all, on all these occasions, the failure did not come true, just the potential. So uh, we can see Shakespeare is invasive. He wants to touch upon it. He just uh, present a possibility that he did not let it happen. Now let's compare. Uh, Tang Xianzu, 
Zhang Yanzhu, in his dream, protected Chen Yufeng, married an aunt, and having two sons and two daughters, and commits adultery and incest with other aunts. All of the aunts are transformed into women. And in his dream, protagonist Lu Sheng marries his donkey. The donkey transformed into a woman. And they have children and grandchildren. And we can see in this Tang Hanzhu's play, he wrote only four plays, but half of the plays touch upon the zoophilia. And the zoophilia not only uh, happens, and also bestiality also happens. So from this, we can see conscience with more explicit and more uh, bold in representing Zophilia. And uh, Shakespeare is more implicit, more invasive, and uh, in, at this point. But why? We can see the we can see the difference between the two cultures. Chinese culture, in Chinese culture, uh, we have the traditional Chin Chinese culture not only embraced Buddhism, but also uh, adopt animism. And as a result, Chinese culture is more tolerant to zoophilia and even to uh, Bestiality. And we also have a dramatic tradition. In China, there is a more famous play called White Snake. In a white snake, the white snake transformed itself into a young woman and who falls in love with a young man and they has a, a, a boy. Let's compare the Western story, uh, beast and a beauty and a beast. Beauty referred to a young man and a beast referred to a lion. But actually the beast lion is transformed from a man, from a handsome young man. So actually is a young man and woman. So it's not a real beast. And why? Because uh, Shakespeare, Western culture is more harsh on zoophilia and the best reality. And uh, in the Old Testament, and we can see this, uh, these lines. If a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and a year shall slay the beast. And if a woman approach upon a beast and lie down there too, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast, they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall surely be put on them. So this is a religious, uh, a, a religious statement. And let, let's see the law. In law of England, the law of England, 1820 read, any person who commits the crime of sodomy, either with a man or with any animal, the found guilty will be put to death. The law was revived 40 years later and a sentence reduced to life, life imprisonment. Now let's move down to the greed for uh, power. Different representations. In Tang Yan the play, when the biggest ambition is wish for the position of the prime minister. And in Han Dan Dream, the one's big, biggest ambition uh, is like this. A gentleman must do merits to build a fame, be a high ranking official or officer, have sumptuous meals, listen to church music, have a big family and live a luxury life. So if one's biggest ambition is uh, like this, so this ambition would have uh, lead no rich side. But in Shakespeare, the desire, a greed for power is a desire for kinship. 
desire for kinship would most probably lead to regicide, the killing of the monarch and replaced him. And we know in old Hamlet was murdered by his younger brother and a key Duncan was murdered by Macbeth. And we can see a potential regicide in his romance, Tempest. The character Antonio said, my strong imagination see a crown dropping upon thine head. Another character said, what? Aren't you waking? So we can see uh, a difference between Tang Yanzhu and Shakespeare. And why did Tang Yanzhu avoid presenting regicide? And why regicide is a recurrent motif in Shakespeare? And we can see some reasons uh, from the dramatic tradition. As we know that uh, no classical, yeah, no classical Chinese play touch upon this motif. And the Chinese drama first appeared in the 12th century. At this point, at this time, the centralized empire had existed in China for many centuries. And also Confucianism had been established as a sort of thought for many centuries. As I mentioned, Confucianism touched great importance to social order, to social stability. So regicide is threat to Confucianism. Another point I like to say, Chinese audience is different from Western audience. Chinese drama is entertainment oriented. And the Chinese audience watch plays more, most for entertainment, for pleasure. So they like a happy ending. So if a regicide occurs in a play, the end cannot be very happy. And um, as to Western Drama, we can see Western drama first appeared in Greek, uh, in Greece. So Western drama, the regicide appeared in more than one Greek tragedies. In Asclepius Agamemnon, we can see the king was killed. In Oedipus the king, the king was killed by his own son. And the Western audience, the reception is also different from a Chinese audience reception. A good example is Macbeth. And it said Shakespeare created this play to please the current king of England, James I. In the play, James I, the ancestor, and Banco was murdered. Although Banco's descendants Became the king of England. But the murders, the killing of one's ancestor is also very terrible. But it is very hard for Chinese audience to imagine that James I enjoy watching the play in which his ancestor was killed. And so it's a difference between Chinese and Western audiences. So from this, uh, I have talked about the love and the different forms of uh, lust. So I like to conclude my uh, talk in this way. In presenting true love, Tang Xianzu is more symbolic and offers a happy ending. And Shakespeare turns to tragedy to represent true love or internal love. In treating human lust, Tang Yanzhu and the Chinese drama in general are more invasive about incest, but more explicit on zoophilia than Shakespeare and the Western theater as a whole. In terms of greed for power, 
Tang Hianzhu and the Chinese drummer in general rule out regicide, which is recurrent motif in Shakespeare and classical Western theater in general. These disparities between Tang Hianzhu and Shakespeare and between Chinese and Western grammar are to a large extent culturally determined. By compare, comparing Tang Hianzhu and Shakespeare, we might have better understanding of the difference between Chinese and Western cultures and enhance our mutual understanding. Uh, so much of my, my talk. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.